Today we're going to learn how to make peg people. I have with me Liz from Simple Simon who's going to show us how to make these darling dolls. Hi Liz. Hi. Well, these are so fun. And when did you start making these? A few years ago, I just saw some peg people, little naked wooden peg dolls in the store, and I thought these would be perfect for my daughter to take with us to places on errands and things. She could keep them in her pocket, They're keep her small, entertained. They're small, and mm -hmm. they've got fabric, so you can give yes. them different clothing. So, well, tell me what supplies you need to oh, make this Not project. very many. They're very easy to make. Um, the peg people just come in bags. You can just buy them at most any craft store. You need some Mod Podge. Here's the craft store again. Just some acrylic paint, some brushes, a stylus or the head of a pin, some fabric, and some trim. All right. So that's about all we need. Ready to yes, get started? Yes, I'm ready. All Show right. me how to do this. Okay. First of all, we're going to start with our little naked wooden peg people. So you just pull them right out. You don't need to sand them or prep them with anything. You can just get painting, which what you grab. We'll keep this one maybe in here. Grab whichever brush you'd like. Um, with, actually I'm going to shake this up. With these people, I picked a light flesh color, but you can use any, there's all different tones of flesh colored paint that you can use. Give them any kind of skin color you want. Yep. Um, with the lighter flesh tone, um, I usually give them two coats of paint. And where I'm painting is just their head. And you just slather all around their head, their neck, and the top of their shoulders. You don't need to be really careful with um, making it a nice line there at the bottom because it's going to be covered up by fabric in just a minute. So we're making dolls with cute girl fabric. Have you yes. made boy peg people before? I have. I'm a nerd. I've made a whole bunch of different kinds. I've made some Star Wars for my nephew and some Harry Potter ones. And oh. There's just lots of different possibilities. They're super fun. Any Star Trek? I like Star Trek. No. <laughs> I can make you a Vulcan if you want. That okay. No, I would like that. I'd like to see that. Okay, now normally, like I said, I'd put two coats, but for today we can just put one coat just to show yeah, where to, how to okay. cover them. So we got those. So we can put our first set over here, and then our next step, oh, I can take your brush. The next step is we're going to put the fabric, the dresses, on our peg people. So we're going to need some Mod Podge. Oops. And some fabric. So, here's your piece of fabric. And a nice polka dot dress. Yes. I'm going to rinse your brush out for you really quick. You just have some water handy so you can use the same brush. Yes. I love working with Mod Podge. So, I'm assuming you just start oh, putting sorry, the Mod Podge on, on the body. Yes, all over the body because we're going to put the fabric right on top of it. So, we'll just take just put a nice thick coat on. It doesn't need to be smooth and it doesn't need to look nice or have a sharp crisp line at the top. Mod Podge dries, the, the kind that I chose is a gloss so it dries clear and a little bit shiny and in a few minutes the whole peg person will be covered in. And you don't do it on the bottom? Not yet. Not Mod Podge on the bottom, just on their bodies. So now you're going to take and decide where you want the back of your person to be, and it doesn't really matter because they look the same all the way around right now. And just stick your fabric on. Now where your fabric's going is this is going to be the top of your dress, so you can make it as modest or as low as you'd like. <laughs> Mine are all a little bit off the shoulder dresses. And you just wrap it tightly around your person, and you'll end up where you started. I just like to look at mine, see it overlap just a little tiny mm -hmm. bit. Then I'll use the scissors and just chop it off. Pass the scissors to you. And then I'm going to grab my brush again, and where that overlaps, I'm going to put in some more Mod Podge, fold it over, and 
fold it over and okay. close it up, cover it in Mod Podge again. So you open, put a little on the inside. Yep, right on the inside. Fold it over. Yep, just zip it closed. Now right now our dresses are a little bit too long for our little ladies. So I'm going to actually steal the scissors and chop off the bottom. When I chop off the bottom, I just kind of hold the scissors flush with the bottom of the peg person. And then their dress is going to be exactly the same length. Trim it up just a little bit as their body. So their dress and their body will be the exact same length. Okay. And then you just put Mod Podge over top of that? Yes, I put Mod Podge over the top of the entire doll. Um, I do it for a couple of reasons. The Mod Podge protects the, the fabric from any spills. My daughter usually keeps hers in her purse with candy. So we'll get, you know, melted M&Ms on them. And with the Mod Podge on top, we can just take, like, the melted chocolate right off. Also, it makes like a nice hard coating um, so the fabric won't peel off or fray off or anything like that. Now this is the part where we're going to paint the bottom with Mod Podge as well. And that just seals the bottom of the fabric to the wood of the doll. So I put a nice thick coat on there. And again, you don't need to be nice with the Mod Podge or worry about brush strokes. It'll all melt away when it dries. When yes, it's the magic of Mod Podge. All, all right. Okay, right. so our next step, I'll steal this guy from you. He's over here. Is once the Mod Podge dries, I usually wait for the Mod Podge to dry just because if I won't get it all over my fingers, we're going to add some trim. So right around the top of our person, we're going to add some trim. Now you can leave them like this if you'd like, but the trim gives them more fun colors and texture. The way I put trim on is I'll start by making a big... And you wouldn't wear a plain dress, so why put mm. your dolls in a plain no. dress? No! <laughs> okay. I start with a big line of Mod Podge all around that top shoulder line of our doll, where the fabric meets the wood. And that's just going to act like a glue for your trim. Exactly. And then, just so I don't waste the trim, I'll do it just straight off the roll. I find the back of the dress, which is where we um, overlap the fabric. And I'll start by putting the trim right on that line. And bring it all the way around, just right over the top of the Mod Podge. Once I get to the back, I overlap it just a bit. I'll snip it off, and I'll pass this over to you. And then I'm going to Mod Podge the trim down over the top. Now when you do this, it looks kind of scary. It looks like we're covering her with white paint or we're ruining the trim, but actually it's going to help make the trim. It'll harden it up and help it to um, stick to the peg doll. And keep it on there, why not? Yes. My daughter is pretty uh, ambitious when she plays, and keeping this extra coat of Mod Podge on keeps the trims on, keeps them from breaking off or falling off or coming loose. And you, you just cake it on there, don't I you? I do just cake it on, just a nice... Nice big coat. Yep. And it'll, it'll take a few minutes to dry. I mean, it's not going to dry in the next 30 seconds but in about 15 minutes it'll be nice and dry. And I usually wait overnight before I let her play with them, let it harden up nice before. I like the trims. It gives a nice texture to it the It does. To the it gives dolls. a little three-dimensional application to it, doesn't it? All right. We Kay. got them done? Mm-hmm. All right. So I'm going to steal this one. Okay. Now once you've got your dolls with their trim on them. Now it's time to add the hair. Now the hair's the part that scares my sister-in-law, the other half of Simple Simon. 
but it's really not hard to put on. I'm just going to show and you. And I love you have, you've got pink hair, red hair, and you even have blue hair. Yeah, so I you can use whatever you want. Whatever color. And I always, it would make sense. You could do the hair when you paint the head, but I like to do the hair last just because um, I like to see them all dressed and with their trim and then decide what kind of hair color or um, hairstyle that they should have. Most of the paint is going to take a take two coats to put their hair on, but today we're just going to use black because it's only needs one coat of paint. So, which hairdo are we going to do on our girls today? Well, you've got a nice swish, and I like this curly hair too. All right, so let's do the curly hair. That sounds cute. Let me grab you. Now, when I do hair, I like to use a little um, smaller size of a brush just because their heads just are so tiny to begin with. And I like to get my paint brush wet before I do their hair. Then there's no stray hairs or flyaways on the brush. Okay. So I'll just dip it right in there. Um, to make that hairdo, we're just gonna make like a little, I'm gonna scoot this guy back a little bit. And you start, make sure you're back. Oh yes, definitely make sure the back's in the back. Normally I put my finger just right on the little ridge in the back then I remember that the front's always facing me. All right, so we're gonna make a swish right on the top of the head. So it kind of looks like we're drawing a target right on the top of her head. Okay. Okay, now we're gonna make one more, just a little loop. You don't even have to move your brush. I usually just set my brush down and I just let my fingers turn it. Perfect. And I do the other side just to try to make it a little bit even. Uh, perfect. Now we're gonna, right now it kind of looks like her hair is pulled back in a pony, but we're gonna give her longer curly hair. So we're gonna make one more so swoop good. at the bottom. Let's even out my circle. Perfect. Yep, they're just like little half circles. And then you Swoop do it on the other on side. On the other side. Right down here. Okay. One more swoop. And just fill in the back. Just fill in the back. And don't make the mistake and fill in the front. I've done that more <laughs> than once. I get going and fill in the front so the back. And like I said, with black, black's easy to work with. It just needs one coat, but Especially with pink or red, you'll need more than one coat. You could do a beaded necklace around her. Oh, that would be darling. Neckline. Especially since it's off the shoulder a little bit. Yes. How cute. Make her a little bit more fancy. Oh, you're quicker, quicker than I am. Okay. My person's done. Now the next thing we need to do, I'll steal your brush, is add the eyeballs. Now I'm going to give this to you. I like to use my stylus. And that's a fun little tool, and you can pick those up anywhere, craft, craft stores store. again. But if you don't have a stylus, don't feel like you need to buy one. You can also use the head of a pin to do the eyeballs with. All right. The only thing to remember when you do eyeballs is um, you'll dip it in. You'll dip straight down to dip into the paint. And then when you do, you go straight down and straight up. Also, when you touch, when you're dipping it into the paint and when you're putting the eyeballs right on so you'll dip straight down and then straight down and straight up on your person. So I'll just do one. Yes. Like that. Perfect. And then clean off your brush. Yes, clean off your brush every time and then that way you're gonna have eyeballs that are the same size because it will have started from a clean head each time. Alright, I'm gonna want you to do this. Okay, now I'm gonna tell you to the head of a pin will give you depending on the size of the head of the pin will give you a different size eyeball than a stylus. So just to be aware of, so you can use different size. So this girl is going to have a little bit larger eyes, so I went straight down. I'm going to go straight down and straight up. So she's got a little bit larger eyes than if you use a stylus or if you use a smaller head of a pin. Okay. Perfect. Here's my eyes. Perfect, perfect. And we'll go straight down and straight up. All right, so she's got a little bit larger eyes than the other ones have. Here's her stylus. All right, I will steal that. Now when they're all finished, we've got them all painted, they're all dressed, ready to go, then we are going to 
Mod Podge over the top of your little girl over the top of their whole bodies, their I'm heads. Just kind of seal everything over. Mm -hmm. And this is good to do because it um, sometimes acrylic paint can rub off on different surfaces. So like when my daughter's running down the stairs and she's got them against the banister, um, the paint could rub off. But if you seal it with Mod Podge, the paint's not going to, to rub off around your house. So I'm going to go over the head and over the entire body one more time. Yep, yep, over the entire thing. Keep your eyeballs stuck in place and your paint because from it peeling gets off. sealed to everything. Yes. And the Mod Podge, you can buy Mod Podge in different lusters, but I always pick the gloss just because I like my little people to be shiny. Now what other things have you made? What other little peg people have you made? Um, well, I've done all sorts of things. Paintings of peg dolls, these little peg dolls. One of my other favorite projects is turning them into little necklaces. Then my daughter can wear her peg doll around her neck. She doesn't have to keep it in her pocket. And then she's got a little buddy to play with if we're getting too long at the grocery store. Oh, they look cute and they're useful. I know you said you also did a nativity. Yes, I did do a nativity out of peg dolls. And I'm kind of excited. I want to try doing a little Noah's Ark as well. See how they work as little animals. So you just yeah. put it on a surface. Yep. Like that. Yep, and just let them dry. So show me your necklaces you made. Oh, the necklaces, you can buy peg dolls in different sizes. And since my little girl, she's only four, I just bought a smaller size peg doll. I did the exact same thing, but at the end... Darker skin color, like that. Yes. I um, drilled a little tiny hole and put an eye hook right in the top, attached a ribbon, and oops, mm -hmm. they're stuck together. And that that great little trim there, oh, and that's fantastic. Yep, on the smaller dolls, it's better to use smaller patterns and smaller trims, but everything else is exactly the same. And then she's got a buddy she can just wear with her. Well, huh? thank you so much. Thanks what for a having great me. idea and. Who wouldn't want one of these for their daughter and even your sons? You could make um, Star mm -hmm. Wars or any kind of boy figurines. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to show this um, little house that oh. you made. Yeah, we make a lot of peg dolls at our house, and so she needed a place to keep them. So a fun way is these houses are sold at craft stores. stores. Yeah. I just painted it up, mod podge some fabric across the front, cut out the doors and the windows, and that's where she can throw all of her peg dolls and keep them in one spot. Great idea, Liz. And so Liz has a website of Simple Simon, and you always have fantastic ideas. And Thank Liz you. is also on our, her and her sister-in-law are also on our project design team. So look for her projects, as well as um, things like this on our website and on Simple Simon. Thanks. Thank you.